Hello everyone! Uh, something unbelievable happened already in round 1 of the World Blitz Championship. Uh, the 3 days of Rapid are over, now there are 2 days of Blitz and in first round Magnus Carlsen is playing the Russian Grandmaster uh, Ernesto Inar Kiev. And uh, I really... I thought I've seen everything, but uh, in this game Magnus Carlsen actually loses because his opponent uh, made an illegal move and uh, Carlsen didn't call the Arbiter. Carlsen played another move and then uh, actually Ernesto Inar Kiev, who, who is the original perpetrator of the illegal move, uh, actually uh, called, the, <laughs> called the Arbiter and uh, Carlsen loses the game. Uh, you'll see what I mean and I was very sad because it, it, it's, uh, it's really a great game. Uh, Carlsen plays uh, with the white pieces and he employs b4 against the Sicilian. I really enjoyed this and I, I was very sad when this happened. I mean, I used this photo of uh, Ernesto in Arkiev. Uh, he looks very happy here, smiling, and uh, that's exactly <laughs> how he looked when he was given an interview after this game. Uh, so let's see this uh, beauty. Uh, like I said, Carlsen has the white pieces and he goes e4. Uh, we have c5 and now a3 by Carlsen. Uh, not the immediate b4, the, the one I troll people with, this is the uh, Mangarini variation. Knight to c6 and only now b4. We have c captures some b4, a captures and now knight captures. Carlsen sacrifices a pawn uh, and we have d4 already grabbing uh, all, this, all the important squares in the center. Uh, we have d5, c3 now, kicking the knight, knight to c6 and uh, e captures on d5. Queen captures and knight to a3. Uh, bishop to f5, and now comes knight to b5. Uh, Carlsen is already threatening knight to c7. Uh, this will check the king and fork the queen, so this would be very unfortunate for Inar Kiev. Uh, rook to c8 defending, and now knight captures on a7, uh, grabbing back the sacrificed pawn. Knight captures, rook captures, and we have e5 now. Uh, knight to f3, e captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and bishop back to d7. And knight to b5. Uh, Carlsen offers the exchange of queens. We have queen captures, king captures, and uh, bishop to c6. Kind of pressuring that to g2 pawn. But Carlsen calmly plays bishop to d3. And this is a very nice move, especially for a blitz game. Uh, if you capture this pawn, uh, then you get rook to e1 check. After king to d8, you get bishop to f5, and you lose the rook. Uh, there is nowhere for this rook to go. Uh, if you try something like, uh, for example, rook to c5, uh, you get rook to a8, and this is checkmate. Rook has to go back, rook captures, this is checkmate. So after bishop to d3, uh, bishop to c5 by er in Arkiev, and now Carlsen plays rook to e1 check. Uh, knight to e7, and uh, by playing bishop to c5, uh, in Arkiev is attacking the rook on a7, and also the pawn on f2. And uh, Carlsen solves this with bishop to a3. Now you can't grab the rook. If you grab the rook, you get rook captures on e7. Uh, king has to move, and now knight captures bishop on a7, and uh, you've just uh, uh, you're just losing this game as as black. So after bishop to a3, uh, bishop captures. We have rook captures and rook to d8 now. Uh, knight to d4, uh, stopping the attack from the rook to the bishop. We have king to d7. Uh, rook back to a7 and rook h to e8. Again, if you go for this g2 pawn, it's uh, it's not that easy. If you capture it, uh, f3 is coming. Now, uh, the b7 pawn isn't protected by the bishop anymore. Also, the king has to be protecting the knight here. And if you try and hold on to that b7 pawn, for example, rook to b8, uh, then comes bishop check, king d8, and now rook to a2, attacking that bishop on g2, bishop uh, to h3 and rook to d2. And uh, in a blitz game, uh, in Arkeo was very low on time, uh, his king would be under too much pressure uh, in this position. Uh, so after rook to a7, rook h to e8, developing another rook. We have king to c2, getting the king out of the d-file, king to c7, and we have rook to b1 now. Uh, rook to b8, uh, f3 now, not allowing to capture the g2 pawn anymore, and knight to d5. We have knight captures on c6, uh, king captures on c6, and bishop to b5. Okay, this doesn't immediately win the exchange, uh, but a king to b6, now Carlsen's rook on a7 is also attacked, and here Carlsen plays rook captures on b7, and this is basically a winning position for white. Uh, you're under check, after you capture the rook, it doesn't really matter, either with the king or with the rook, for example, king captures, uh, simply bishop captures on e8, uh, this comes with a discovered check from the rook on b1, 
A king has to move, you capture, king captures, and after bishop captures on f7, uh, you're up two pawns. Uh, it's a completely winning uh, endgame for Magnus Carlsen. But the problem is, and uh, this is something, uh, I don't think I've ever seen this. Uh, after this uh, king to b6 move, Carlsen did play rook captures on b7 with check. Uh, and in this position, Ernesto Inarkiv totally ignored this check, and he played knight to e3. And he checked Magnus Carlsen while he himself was in check. And uh, this was the moment when Carlsen should have stopped the clock and uh, called the arbiter and say, hey, the guy made an illegal move, uh, you know, give me my full point. Uh, but instead, Carlsen automatically played king to d3. And after playing king to d3, Ernesto Inarkiev now called the arbiter and uh, he said Carlsen made an illegal move, this uh, isn't possible. And because Carlsen didn't call the arbiter, uh, Carlsen in the end lost this game. So this is this is pretty amazing. You know, both of them were in time trouble. I mean, Carlsen was a bit better on the clock in Arkiv. At one point, I think he got down to three seconds. Uh, <clears throat> in Arkiv, may, may, makes an illegal move. He's in check. He checks Carlsen, and then Carlsen moves out of check, and then Carlsen loses the game. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've ever heard of this rule. I mean, rules are rules, but uh, what a, what a way to to defeat the <laughs> the world uh, the world champion. Not a bad game by not a bad game by uh, Russian Grandmaster Ernesto in Kiev, and like I said, he was very very happy after this game after uh, while well, giving the interview. So yeah, uh, the moral of the story: uh, know the rules. Uh, you know, not not just the rules of the chess, but also rules of the of the tournament and of uh, uh, the time control you are playing. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, I will make probably both of them from the World Rapid Championship. And uh, I would like to thank Pihohe Guilherme and Larry Davis for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, once again, thank you all and uh, I will see you soon.